guys. We're just down at the plant here. About to get our reel offloaded. There's our man Ian. Forklift. There's mom. Hey guys. Alright, so we'll just wait until he comes over here with the forklift. Get lifted out. Lift it four arms, yeah. right? One, two, three, four, five, six, six <laughs> people here. Yeah. Nice, but your dad. It's a hundred pounds each, right? You know, when you lift it up. There <laughs> you go, man. Guys, that was easy enough. Can I run over here in the boat, pick it up. Yep. Oh, Marvin, we're gonna put it right here, okay? okay. No, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, no way. Are you leaving in the morning? <laughs> Yeah, nice. 
nice and smooth. Yeah. Just like that. Just like that. Thanks, Marlon. the deck next time. <laughs> but anyway, 1,500 pound reel, still slides good on gel coat. <laughs> Okay guys, we're back. Hey guys. Looks like we're baiting up. Yeah. Getting ready for some halibut, so coming your way soon. Yeah, just leaving mom and dad. Oh, oh looks man. like the, the competition's already happening. He got a whole 10 minute head start on me, so. Oh, I don't need a head start against you. Oh, so what's on the menu here anyways? Well, we've got some cod squid, some pollock from last year. We're just gonna mix that in across the whole set because it's old. And we have some new pollock plays over there that we'll get to here in a minute. Nice. Man, these squid baits are hard. Okay, they just came out of the freezer. I know, but I'm too weak. Sorry, Mom. No easy bait today. I guess not. It has to thaw. <laughs> <laughs> I could set it aside just like this for a few. That's what I would do. Oh. Try for a few. Oh, 
for the darker one. There we go. All right. Well, pretty simple task. Yeah. Put some meat on a hook. Put it in the tub. <laughs> Take us about an hour and a half to bait all these, probably. Yeah. I was just over here, getting my controls hooked up. Gotta go grab a little never seize for these bolts. I think I'll get a nylock on there too. Get this tightened down. I run my cables in from the engine room. They plug in right to the bottom here. Then we'll have throttle and steering on the back deck here. There's a jog stick that turns the rudder back and forth. This is the throttle. And gotta get my hydraulic lines hooked up. So I guess that's my chore. Alright guys, so we'll keep on going here. Got one down, like mom says, four to go. Pick you up once we're done. So dad's uh, hooking up these hydraulics over here. Just the, just the usual, we've yep. done it before, so I'll show you again, but just two hoses here. Uh, this valve is a cutoff for the for the flow to the motor on the reel. Okay. Safety feature. Don't need that part. <clears throat> Safety and also speed regulation. When when, we're, when the reel is full like this, it spools in really fast. So when it starts doing that, that's when we slow it down. So he said the uh, black is A. Yep. Drive just the way you like it. <laughs> yeah. I want some. Yep. So where where do I I want this to go under, huh? You got shot now. Yeah, once you dip it down. Under both of these? Uh yeah. So I know everybody keeps asking or suggesting that we put 
quick disconnects on these, but yeah, I'm just not a big fan of them, to be honest. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. It's just something else to fail. I know they're pretty reliable, but they do leak. They got our rings in them. They leak. And for as much as we put this equipment on and off every year, it's just not worth the hassle. Not to mention, I think we literally need like four sets of them and uh, 100 bucks plus a set. Yep. Yeah, do the math. If they're not stainless steel or uh, brass, bronze, they're just gonna turn into a big rusty mess. Not worth uh, the worry and headache, so. These work fine, as long as you get the right wrench. They can get rusty, doesn't matter. Still work fine. So we're just gonna stick with these. Not worry about it. Down. Weakling. Oh, I gotta get this coupler off this other one first. <coughs> Wrong order of operation. Shouldn't be too bad. Quick as lightning. That didn't spill much. A couple drops. You know, the other good thing about doing this is you can see what your oil looks like. If you got a problem with your oil, you're going to know it because you're actually going to see it. Otherwise, there's a good chance that if you don't have any leaks in your system, you're never gonna know if you got water in, in your oil. That's nice clean oil right there. Yep. Nothing to worry about. We've seen, uh, seen we, we've had water get into our system before because we had a bad spool. All these spools are stainless on these valves, but we had a valve up on our anchor winch that was uh, chrome plated steel and the chrome had chipped off and the spool was pitted. And even though it didn't leak any fluid at all, the water would pool up on it. And when you'd uh, engage the lever down, it was actually forcing water into the, into the valve assembly and into the uh, oil. And so we started getting emulsified oil and we couldn't figure out why. And uh, we finally figured it out. That's the only place it could have came from. Took a little while too. Yeah. It was really annoying. Was so pretty. that's the only reason that we knew that we had water in the oil is just from uh, busting lines back here to hook up our hydraulics. Otherwise, chances are it would have run like that for some time. It's hard to see. You don't have a, like a clear sight glass or anything on our hydraulic tank. So it was one of those things that we didn't really know about. So it's not all cons about being this way. There's actually pros too. I never remember if it's the 15 16 or the one inch. So I got both of them out. It's yeah. the one inch and the seven eighths. Okay, what do we want to do with these hoses? Um, this blue one? Yeah. Just the We'll just wind it in there. Because we might it. probably have to get broken. I just snug them out. Uh -oh. okay. Yep. Good for now. Doesn't really matter too much, huh? Yep. All right. Guess I'll get back to cutting bait. I want to share that with you. Easy. Yep. Easy work. 
yeah these are pretty easy to to put on and off it just takes a couple of minutes so I mean it's a good suggestion it's, it's totally feasible in a lot of applications but this just isn't really one of them yep if you're taking the stuff on and off a couple times a week sure it'd be a different story but usually when this reel goes on here it stays on for a month or so anyways or longer okay so i just got these hoses back here to hook up and one over here to swap and get to go there all right guys baiting's all wrapped up got four tubs baited we'll be playing for the line we have here on the reels so. I've got all the hydraulics hooked up. Yeah, good to go. No leaks. Splice this uh, ceiling back on the shop that we broke off last year. So we can spool this back on. Nothing fancy. This broke right at the link last year, so we don't have to worry about the length or anything. Our markings are still good on that. We've got these marked in 25 fathom. Uh, increments so we know how much gear we're setting out. We use this for our buoy line also. So we'll go ahead and put this back on. Because we don't have to worry about it. safety valve right here on the inside so if you ever happen to get hooked and pulled in you can just reach over here and stop that drum good thing to have right there if you get pulled into here you'll do some pretty serious damage to your arm or your hand or whatever if you're hooked ran a buoy through here last well a few years back it was enough to break the love joy that joins these shafts together so there's a lot of pressure there yeah yeah the love choice are these basically just two interlocking pieces with the rubber spline in the middle kind of gives it some cushion but yeah i wasn't paying attention and buoys came over the back and hit the level wind right here and, and cracked one of those love joys so that's a lot of force right there. If you ever got hooked and pulled into there, that probably shatter your hand or your arm. If you're hooked through the flesh, it's gonna, it's gonna rip you up. So it's good to have some kind of shut off close by. At least it gives the guy a chance. Yeah. Gotta be quick. <laughs> We're careful though. Yeah, but it's, it's slow enough that, and we don't actually haul this fast either. So there's time. Yep. As you get more and more line on the spool, this hauls faster because you're turning a bigger diameter. So usually we throttle it back a little bit, which we also just use the same valve for, which makes it really nice. We can slow our reel down right here with that to a more manageable level when we're hauling gear kind of something like that I think if it's coming up too fast over the rail you just lose fish and just makes it tough yeah it's going too quick it's hard to unsnap you get buried in hooks you can snap out for emergencies too right like if you're hooked you get sucked in yep exactly huh Close. Everybody knows where that is. If these guys ever hear us yell for help, they know where to where to stop it. If we yell to stop it, they know where to go to. back in the morning when we start laying some gear out until then thanks for watching thanks for subscribing